Fashion businesses here in France tend to go one of two ways. Either they fail or they thrive before being bought up by a powerful luxury group. But some companies do manage to resist that fate, weathering economic crises, the challenges of a globalized economy, and now also the pandemic on their own. So how exactly do they do it? And what makes them tick? Having longevity is about being able to pass the keys on to the third generation, to my children, to Charlotte. It's about making sure that the spirit of what we've created can live on. It's about good design, but more than anything else, it's about making a great quality shoes. Design is nothing without that human touch, and being technically proficient means nothing without good design. Arsh are shoemakers, specialists in flexible soles. The business, based in the Loire Valley, has existed in its current form since 1968, but the story starts a lot earlier. In the 1930s, my dad got tuberculosis as a child. And the fact he was ill at such a young age always pushed him to see the positives in life. He loved finding happiness within adversity and even sadness. He was really determined to overcome difficulty, that ability to bounce back. Because he was ill, he missed a lot of school. So he ended up becoming an autodidact. He had to learn how to get by on his own very early, how to earn a living. So he began to think about what he'd be able to do with the materials he was able to get hold of during that difficult period, during the war. And he started by making shoes for the local community in Touraine, until he was eventually deemed a true artisan shoemaker. And he got there completely by himself, by finding technical solutions that worked with the aesthetic he was going for. Bit by bit, the company evolved in step with a changing society. It's about shaking things up. In the 60s and 70s, when everything was being appended, the real question was how to make sure the shoes were still comfortable, still good for your feet. We've always had that nod to rebellion. There's always that twist in what we do. There's always something a little bit interesting going on. And you can even see that with my parents. My dad is the one who really embodies the spirit of the company, while my mom is the one who looks after the financial and commercial side of things. Catherine Hélène is far from giving up her role, but she is already thinking about the future. Her daughter Charlotte is 24. Her studies in international business suggest she might be keen to follow in her family's footsteps. If I had to decide the mark I'd like to leave on the business, it would be setting up initiatives with a humanitarian bent, maybe with a focus on the environment. I'm specialized in social enterprise, and I'd love, for example, to be able to use my skills to set up some sort of foundation or any other project that I care about, where the goal is to help people. Now to Weston, another shoemaker beating its own path. Olivier Sayard is the label's artistic director. He's recently put on an exhibition called Chaussures, a play on the French words for shoes and artworks. Every time I used to go into luxury boutiques, or any boutique really, whenever there was any sort of cultural event or display, it would always be right at the back of the shop, badly lit. Almost like it wasn't completely sure of itself. I always thought that was a shame. I always preferred something closer to a real exhibition, like you'd see at the Pompidou Centre, with a real introduction on the wall, a guide to help you know what you're looking at. And of course, models of Western shoes, so that you really get to see that Western savoir faire. Weston's a French brand, we date back to 1891. I wanted this space to really be a celebration of that savoir faire. Shoes that are almost entirely handmade, styles that are real classics from 1937 onwards, 1946 for the moccasin. I wanted that manufacturing knowledge to be on show. As for example, 
The shoe in the window is a spider shoe, an homage to Louise Bourgeois, and it showcases some of the real foundations of what we do. It's double-stitched with linen thread to make it completely waterproof, and it's also a bit of a nod to our dear spiders at our tannery. We have our own tannery and we really cherish our spiders because they protect the leather from a certain type of rot by eating all the insects. And there's another model here, La Cambre, it's a real Western classic. We still make it from a single piece of leather that's modelled around a piece of wood. It's almost entirely done without stitches and we're the last shoemakers to produce anything like it. There's also this one which has a triple, triple, triple sole. The one I'm wearing now is ordinary and basic, a 1950s model. But here we've added two more soles and that makes this shoe completely extraordinary. High-end footwear is a competitive business, but these brands are proof there's still space for the human touch in a world dominated by big luxury brands.